what are the possible cardinalities for finite fields? So firstly, if p is a prime number, then you can look at the finite field z mod p z. We know that that's a field. Uh, so it's a field of order p. What other orders can fi uh, fi finite fields have? So uh, to understand this, firstly, suppose f is a field, then you define a ring homomorphism j from z to f by setting j of 1 is equal to the unit of f. And in the two cases, the first case is that j is injective. injective. In this case, we say that f has characteristic 0. You may prefer to say that f has characteristic infinity, but actually we just, the common terminology is that f has characteristic 0. So you can keep adding 1 to itself and uh, in, in, in the field f and you'll never get 0. You can keep adding 1 to itself and get different elements of the field f. Uh, but in the finite case, of course, j cannot be injective. Uh, in that case, the kernel of j is an ideal. So, kernel of J is a proper ideal of Z, so it's it's generated by some element uh, P. Okay, but uh, the image of phi is therefore isomorphic to Z mod P, and this being a subring of a field is an integral domain. The subring of an integral domain is an integral domain being a subring of f is an integral domain which implies that p is prime and so in this case we say that f has characteristic p Okay, and if f has characteristic p for some prime number p, we say that the characteristic of f is positive. So this is called the positive characteristic case. Okay, we'll also use some notation. Here we'll say char f is 0 and here we'll say char f is p and we'll also say char f is positive. as opposed to 0. Okay, and now a finite field obviously must fall into case 2. So for any finite field the characteristic is a prime number p and in that case if f is finite then char f is p for some prime p. And image of J is um, is going to be isomorphic to Z mod P Z, which we have called F P. So F is an extension of F P. So F is a field extension of the field uh, Z mod P Z, and therefore it is a finite dimensional. Uh, since it's finite itself, hence a finite dimensional vector space over Fp. Okay, so that means that uh, if, if, if the dimension of F over Fp is n, then the cardinality of F has to be P 
to the power n. So the conclusion is that if f is a finite field, its order is p to the power n where p is the characteristic of f and n is some uh, positive integer. That raises the question that if I have a prime number p and a positive integer n, can I always find a field with p to the power n many elements? And the answer to that turns out to be yes. That's our theorem. Uh, let p be any prime. And n any positive integer. Then there exists a field f of order p to the n. That means a field with p to the n many elements. And uh, the proof is uh, uses uh, what we had before about. Uh, showing that um, every polynomial, uh, if you have a field and you have a polynomial over that field, then you can find an extension where this polynomial is a product of uh, linear factors. Now, but to start with, if n is 1, then we can just take f equals z mod pz and we are done, right. So, uh, <clears throat> in general, the polynomial you consider is uh, t to the power t to the n minus t. Okay, so this is a polynomial in uh, so we are calling this field f t. So this is a polynomial in f t t. Its coefficients are in um, z mod p z and uh, <coughs> Uh, let E be an extension where t to the power pn minus t uh, is a product of linear factors. Okay, now note that if I take the derivative of this b of t p to the n minus t, that turns out to be p to the n t p to the n minus 1 and uh, minus 1, uh, which is actually just uh, minus 1. So, surely uh, the GCD of t p to the n minus t comma 1 is 1. So, uh, so, by the derivative criterion for a polynomial having distinct roots, therefore, the roots of t p to the n minus t are uh, p to the n distinct elements of t. And now, it only remains to show that these distinct elements actually form a subfield of E. So the claim is that the roots of T P to the N minus T form a subfield of T. We need to just check that if alpha and beta are roots then alpha plus beta is a root. So, if alpha and beta are roots, then we have alpha p to the n uh, plus beta p to the n. Alpha p to the n is equal to alpha and beta p to the n is equal to beta. Now, there is a very uh, useful trick in uh, characteristic p, which is that uh, 
alpha plus beta to the power p is just equal to alpha to the p plus beta to the power p in a field of characteristic p. This is because uh, if you just write down the binomial expansion, uh, you have alpha plus beta to the power p is some k goes from 0 to p, p choose k, alpha to the k, beta to the k minus 1. But this p choose k is uh, just uh, uh, going to be divisible by p unless k equals 0 or 1 the integer p to the p. or p. So, in positive characteristic what happens is, in characteristic p what happens is all these terms die out leaving only the first term and the last term. So, this becomes alpha raised to p plus beta raised to p. And now you can apply the same uh, equation again and again and so you can get alpha plus beta raised to p squared. Well, that is alpha plus beta raised to p then that raised to p which is alpha to the p plus beta raised to p to the power p which is alpha raised to p squared plus beta raised to p squared. And continuing in this way what you can show is that alpha plus beta raised to the power p to the n is equal to alpha raised to the power p to the n plus beta raised to the power p to the n for all alpha beta and all n greater than 0. So, using this what we see is that uh, if uh, we have alpha plus beta raised to the power p to the n, well we just saw that is alpha to the power p to the n plus beta to the power p to the n. But uh, since alpha is a solution of t to the p to the n minus t, alpha to the p to the n is just alpha and beta to the p to the n is just beta. So, what we get is alpha plus beta to the power p to the n is again equal to alpha plus beta which means that alpha plus beta is also a root of the polynomial uh, t to the power p to the n uh, minus t. Okay, so what we have shown is that if alpha and beta are roots then alpha plus beta is a root. It is very easy to show that if alpha and beta are roots, then alpha beta is also a root. So, you write alpha beta to the power p to the n is alpha to the power p to the n, beta to the power p to the n just because multiplication is commutative, but alpha to the power p to the n is alpha and beta to the power p to the n is beta. So, alpha beta to the power p to the n is alpha beta. Alpha beta is also a root. So, what, of course, 0 and 1 are also uh, roots. So, what we have is that the roots of the polynomial t to the power p to the n minus t form a subring of f. Um, but there is also this simple fact that the inverse of, an L of a root is again a root. Alpha inverse to the power p to the n. So, that is the same as alpha to the power p to the n inverse. Okay, but that is alpha inverse. So, alpha inverse is also a root. Therefore, the roots of the polynomial t to the power p to the n minus t form a subfield of E. And we have seen because of the derivative criterion for uh, repeated roots that this polynomial actually has p to the n distinct roots. So, they form a subfield of E of order p to the n. And so, the conclusion is that yes, uh, for any prime p and any integer n greater than or equal to 1, there exists a field f of order p to the n. You just start with uh, f p. We take the polynomial t to the power p to the power n minus t, find a field uh, in which it factorizes into linear factors and look at the subfield consisting of its roots and that is going to be a field 
of order P to the n.